Hello there! Today is Friday, March 10th, and we are back here for you, with you, for Redeemer 411. Today we bring you information about this Sunday's and Wednesday night services, the playground's nearing completion, Heather has Lily information, we'll have some good news and some announcements. <laughs> The third Sunday in Lent continues our series, His Prayer, Our Prayer. Your message, Thy Kingdom Come, examines the next petition in the Lord's Prayer, but I bet you have a little bit more in store for us than just that. Yeah, correct, Phil. Um, have you, I don't want to ask this, have you ever wondered about your citizenship? Hmm. Depends what kind of citizenship you're talking about. Ah, oh, and what I'm talking about is your earthly citizenship versus what Paul says about your Heavenly citizenship. So there are actually two kingdoms. And so in the Lord's Prayer, we pray about thy kingdom come, God's kingdom of grace, God's kingdom of glory. And we're going to take a look at those two kingdoms and see which one we're in now and which one we're going to. And various people in the Bible, when they talk about kingdoms. And um, I'll just give you one for a short example. The thief on the cross. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And uh, so we're taking a look at the, the two kingdoms, where we are now, where we will be, and how we get there. So thy kingdom come. Yeah, Pastor, and one of the verses that you'll be focusing on is Colossians 3.2, yeah. which says, set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. That's right. And it kind of gives you a clue about where I'm going in the sermon about the kingdom of glory versus the kingdom of grace. <music> Tammy's very excited about the progress on the playground. All indications are that the work will be completed today. Here's, a, here's a look at the current progress. Check that out. Man, where, where, where's the slide? Where is that slide? It's coming. Oh, where, oh, oh where, there where, it is. Oh, oh, oh I, I see it. I see it. There it is. You know, I was talking to Several. the kids at, uh, in, in chapel on Wednesday, and we were getting excited about the playground, and I said, I can't wait to go down the slide. And they said, PB, they call me PB, PB, you're too big. And I said, no, no, they told me I can go down the slide. And then they said, together? I said, yep, so we're going to go down together, me and the kids. So, uh, And you are going to join us. There looks like there's three slides. So. Mm -hmm. all, yep, yep. All the concrete's getting poured today, and that's yeah. it. Yeah. It's exciting stuff. Good. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm gonna go slide down. Shoo. We are out of the office. We are. Even though this is your segment of you being out of the yep. office, but we are both out of the office, which is a good thing because we've been working a lot the last couple of days. So. Yes, I think we're about camping out yeah, phase I think so. of, of it, office it's, work it's right now. It's good to stretch our legs and Get the blood flowing in our legs again and For get sure. up and moving around. But um, Realize there's other rooms in the church yeah, other than our office. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I understand that uh, you'd be getting, like I am, to work on Easter. And you have yes. some thoughts about something, uh, let me say, fragrant? Yes, for show. sure. Yep. Yeah. So I have a couple of things to share. And first up is Easter lilies. It's mm -hmm. that time already. Can you believe it? No. Uh, <clears throat> Not at all. Yeah, it's flying by. But the price has gone up just a little Ooh. bit this year. Okay. So they yeah. are $10 each. Yeah. And all you have to do is head down to the bulletin board right outside the fellowship okay. hall, and there'll be an envelope. Just grab the envelope, fill out the information, and put your uh, payment inside. And then you take that envelope and drop it in an offering tray for any service. If you're going to make a check, you're going to write it out to Redeemer Lutheran Church. Okay. And in the memo, put Easter Lily. Um, and still slide that in the envelope, drop it in an offering plate, and you're good to go. And we can take orders all the way up until Palm Sunday. That is my question. Because people tend to put things off. Please don't put it off, but, but when I is get the it. last day you need it? Palm Sunday, Palm really. Sunday. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So, yep. yeah. Well, um, Easter Lily is coming up. Um, mm -hmm. Anything else on your plate? Yes. It is spring ahead. Yes. Yeah. And if you're like me. Wait a me, minute. No, wait. What am I saying yes for? We lose sleep, right? No, we gain sleep. No, we lose sleep. Oh, so I don't. So, yeah. So if they get my yes, like. No, uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, this okay. is the one that every year feels like a complete shock That's to right. me. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also, if you're like me, you need a heads up because this is the time of year where you're going to be late or you're going to miss it. 
So when do we change the clocks? Saturday night. This Saturday? Yes. Okay. Yes. All but right. I've been trying to convince my family to start now. Yeah. Because if you have kids or pets, mm -hmm. start now. Just start inching up their bedtimes. <laughs> maybe, maybe you should change the clocks on Friday. I actually yeah. thought about that. Yeah. If I can make it work, I'm gonna. Uh, that might help people out. So uh, yeah. maybe you might set your clocks ahead of one hour on Friday, and that way you're all good to go um, for Sunday morning. Yeah. Unless you have an appointment on Saturday. That's true. That is very true. Like well, I do. So. I have multiple appointments on Saturday. We so do. So an hour ahead would not work. Yeah, uh, we do too. Um, yeah. So that's why I probably won't uh, get away with it. Uh, but I, I don't want people missing worship but uh for so, sure we so need to see everybody there on sunday clocks had one hour so uh yep. we had easter lilies yep we have clocks going forward yep. um you got anything else there? that's all for now that's it yep well, that's it for this week This Wednesday, our Lenten series, His Hands, continues with praying hands, mm -hmm. focusing on the prayer habits of Jesus. We'll learn why he prayed, what he prayed for, what prayer benefits he received, and why we should do the same. Indeed, Phil. And all those questions you just asked, we can ask about ourselves. You know, what do they, what do they say? The, the four W's, the who, what, when, and where? We're going to be taking a look at that, focusing on our example being Jesus when his hands were folded in prayer. So uh, prayer was a, an important part of his life. As we know, whenever he had a big decision to make, he went off to a solitary place to pray. And it was a big part of his life, and he encourages us to, for it to be a big part of our life. So uh, the hands of Jesus are praying hands. Don't forget. We begin our Wednesday with our congregational dinner at 5 p.m. This week, we'll have Masa Choli provided by the Board of Ed and Daycare Board. Service is going to begin at 6 p.m., and the choir is going to be staying after service for their rehearsal. And I hear that Barb is also, if she has time, going to make her macaroni and cheese. Is that good? Oh, if you haven't had Barb's macaroni and cheese, it is fantastic. Right. She puts a special ingredient in there that's kind of a secret sauce. And it's fantastic. Yeah. So hopefully we'll get that. Now, this might sound stupid. What is mastacholi? Mastacholi is an Italian dish. It's an Italian okay. pasta with meat sauce. And it's a special kind of noodle pasta. And the okay. kids eat this up. Barb makes this huge, I mean a huge dish, pan, whatever you want to call the thing. And they devour it. The kids love mastacholi day. Mastacholi. The youth group had a great time on their ski trip last weekend, as you can see from these photos. Looks pretty awesome. What a crew. Oh, somebody's getting some air. That would be Gabe. Nice. Of course it's Gabe. That a boy, Gabe. Now, I've noticed in those photographs that for pretty much all of them, they're all standing up. Although there was one that's sewn on the ground, but I think that was set up that way. But I don't think anybody really fell this time. Did they, Billy? Yeah. There was lots of falling. Yeah. Well, see, I've heard some stories from the youth about how great it was. And uh, they didn't tell me any stories about them falling, though, Billy. So it I was don't... falling. Oh, uh, it was falling. 13, uh, to, so... 13 to 17 year olds, yeah. they don't care about falling. You know, but, I, um... Actually, ask Mitchell about my fall. Oh. oh. So we have some interesting stories that Billy might want to share from the slopes. And um, I know, I keep saying that I'm going to join the youths one of these times. And, uh, Billy's give me these lessons every so often in my office about how I have to stand and put my feet and doing this and uh, a couple more sessions I just might be ready to get up on the slopes. But uh, I'm going to say this, Billy. If Pastor ever goes skiing, I would like to go. I would like, <laughs> I would, I would like to be there to see right. that. Yeah. To watch or to laugh or both? To watch and laugh with you, okay. not at you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because there'd be lots of falling. To, to join right. in the, the frivolity. That's right. I like it. But the, this be, this house better have a hot tub because if I fall so yeah. often, I might be yep. needing that hot tub, Billy. Yep, that's yeah. right. Well, the youth have not had their current schedule recently because of the ski trip, mm -hmm. but they'll be returning to their regular schedule this week. On Sunday, they're going to meet between services to continue their discussions and their current Bible study, Lent why? And then on Monday, they'll be meeting over at the Annex for their weekly gathering starting at 6 p.m. Well, it's good that the youths are going back to their, their regular schedule time and days, but uh, if I could, Phil, I want to back up a moment uh, because uh, last week, as you know, we discussed 
that this uh, has an opportunity written all over it for them to display Jesus to other people, especially on the slopes. Um, however, I've heard that this may have happened to them. Is that correct, Billy? Yeah. It was, it was kind of interesting because Hallie and I went skiing uh, at the same place uh, a few weeks prior. And when Hallie and I were there, the weather was not that great. So the mountain was empty. And hmm. we had this very long discussion with one of the operators of the ski lifts as we're going through. This was a couple hour discussion, uh, one minute at a time. So, I mean, it was hmm. it, you know over a couple hours. So uh, the conversation was like 10 minutes long, but it took a couple hours because wow. you go off ski, come back, go off ski, come back. And found out that he is also very involved in his church, uh, a similar role to me, um, found out that. We were bringing up our youth group, and uh, we, we discussed some things about that. And Allie and I hadn't thought about that since that moment. And as I'm going up the ski lift, getting off with some of the youth, this guy jumps out of the booth at the top of the, top of the, uh, the chairlift, runs over to me and goes, Hey, youth group guy! And hands me a bottle of eggnog that he had purchased for us. He did the exact same thing to Hallie. That's awesome. And it was an opportunity for me to let the youth group know that showing Jesus to people can be a something, something as simple as that. Yeah. He had a conversation with us. He marked it. He made sure that uh, we were important to him in, in his work and job and that mm. the youth group being there was important to him as well and gave us a little gift. Wow. That's awesome. That is cool. That is really cool. Now, were there any opportunities that you saw that the youths were involved with, with sharing Jesus with somebody? Yeah, I, I, I think probably the biggest example would be Gabe. Oh, okay. Uh, he was the only experienced snowboarder there. And we had on the first day, oh, probably seven of them that wanted to try out hmm. snowboarding. Now, Hallie and I have snowboarded ourselves. We can do it, but we're not experienced enough to teach it. Hmm. Uh, when we're snowboarding, we're just trying to maintain standing position uh, ourselves. So okay. teaching it would not be something that uh, w would be good for us. So Gabe took on the opportunity to show others how to do this, and hmm. um, he found it uh, challenging. Uh, and I think others found it beneficial. Wow. So, you know, he took that opportunity to not participate to the level he may have wanted mm -hmm. for a while because he was paying attention to others instead of himself wow. and his enjoyment. So I think that's a that's probably a prime example. There were others, but uh, that's a good one for, for this moment, moment. And then what I was thinking of, which we're not going to take time now to share, maybe in the future for sure. when we talk about it, is the group in a, as a whole, Phil, mm -hmm. Uh, showed the love of Jesus because they had two kids who were not part of the youth group that were invited to to come with them, uh, one from Italy and the other from Belgium. Belgium. Mm -hmm. And so they showed the love of Jesus to these two kids yeah. from yeah. different countries. And it was so, wonderful having them yeah. along. So uh, different day, different story, but we can hear about that story yeah. next time. Easter Sunday, Pastor, is only one month yes. away. April 9th is the date this year, which means that we're about halfway through yeah, Lent and yeah. almost a Holy Week. Can you yes, believe it? Yeah, we, we are. And I'm, I'm working on the services now. Yeah. Well, let's see what you have planned for us that week. Got Palm Sunday. Yes. Will that be part of the Sunday series, His Prayer, Our Prayer? Yes, indeed. And we're going to combine the Palms and Palm Sunday and my theme of His Prayer, Our Prayer. How about Monday, Thursday? His hands still? Yes, yes His okay. hands. Uh, because as you know, Monday, Thursday um, is Holy Communion, the Last Supper. And so, of course, you probably can guess this, His Consecrating. Hands. What type of service can we expect this year for Good Friday, Pastor? Um, kind of the same that most people are used to. It's a combination of a service of darkness, a tender brace service, the reading of the Passion narrative. Uh, it's kind of like all those three combined. Uh, so there'd be uh, darkness at the end, uh, the streptuitous, and the Christ candle being brought back out, the Passion reading, and my sermonette, and it's not going to be a full-fledged, full-blown sermon because of the service. Um, it's more of a sermonette type of thing, and it's on his pierced hands, of course, being Good Friday. 
And then Easter morning, what's your message for our celebration of the tomb being empty? Celebrations. Celebrations. Because as we did last year, we're having two services. Um, not really sunrise service because people say, well, pastor, sunrise is not seven o'clock, which I know. But for us, our first service is seven o'clock. And then our second service is 10 o'clock. And in between, the youth are serving up an awesome breakfast as they always do. A lot going on. A lot going on, both services. We'll have Holy Communion. Both services will have a children's message. Uh, but they'll be a little bit different. Uh, the seven o'clock is more of your typical sunrise-ish type of service. And then the second service, the 10 o'clock service, is more of the festival uh, service, uh, combining you know the organ and, and the middle cross, the praise band, um, some special music and that kind of stuff. So I'm looking forward to it. And I'm trying to put his hands, his prayer, our prayer, and Easter, putting them together, and coming out with two sermons combining all those three themes, so. I think you can do it. I, well, I'm gonna try to pull it off. You'll do it. You know, Pastor, sometimes it feels like we're all alone in this world. Well, what do you mean, Phil? We're more connected than we have ever been before. Okay, that's kind of true. But we have these devices that bring oh, yeah. us the happenings of the world instantly. Like the Big East scores in the basketball. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. And there's all kinds of apps that are intended to keep us up to date with what is going on in the lives of, well, everybody but. But it, it, it all feels kind of empty, you know? Yeah. Hallow. And not really, well, real. Well, yeah. I Unfortunately, I... Know what you mean, Phil. Yeah, it seems like everyone on these things has the perfect life, the perfect opinion, or the perfect solution, or the biggest problem. Oh, yeah. But it feels like something's missing. As we've been journeying through Lent, Phil, uh, we have been preparing ourselves. And it was Jesus who spent 40 days in the desert preparing himself as well. And, um, you know, um, it wasn't boasted about on any social media platform. Yeah, it's a good point, Pastor. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's what makes all this feel not real yeah. or empty. Mm -hmm. All too often, it's missing the most important part of our lives. Mm -hmm. It's our relationship with God. Yeah. Jesus walked with us, talked with us, prayed mm -hmm. with us, and for us. He ultimately gave everything for us. Um, and it's, uh, it's no different today. Um, put these things away because these things are often at the center of our lives. Yeah. I say put them away because God is the one that has you at the center of his life and attention. And Phil, that's hard to imagine. With all the people in the world today, that he can still focus on each and every one of us individually around the world. How does he do it? I don't know, but he does. And that's the good news. Yeah. He's always there for us, there to listen, there to help. All we have to do is ask and seek him out and ask for his help. Mm -hmm. Wonderful things can happen when we put our trust in him and not the material things of the world. Yeah, yeah, like his phone. We so often go to our phone to seek help, to seek yeah. answers. Again, I say, put them away because it's time to seek his help. Tell him what's on your mind. Good or bad, happy, sad, joyful, angry, it doesn't make a difference. He wants to be the first one you post to not your cell phone. He responds often, every time you ask him. Let's do just that. Father, so often, as Phil said, we're tied into our material possessions, we're tied into our, our cell phones, our tablets, all the social media out there, and we go to that for answers. We go to that for the, the, the answers to the problems and the questions we have in life, and, and we reach out to others. And I'm not saying that's bad, Lord, but we need to reach out to you. Help us to put these devices away. Help us to put all the worldly things aside and come to you. For you answer our prayers according to your will for our lives. You called us to pray without ceasing and let us do just that. And then help us not to walk away, not just to pray and then walk away, but to pray and stop and listen because you will always respond to us. So Father, help us to pray. Help us to go to you first in our lives, to put you first and then wait, wait upon the Lord because you will respond. 
Thank you, God, for responding to us and answering our prayers and requests according to your will for our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Women's Bible Study will continue their study on the fruit of the Spirit at 6.30 p.m. on Monday. The youth group will also be gathering at 6.30 at the Annex. On Wednesday, the noon Bible study continues, and then later that evening, our congregational Lenten dinner is at 5 p.m. with service following at 6 p.m. Choir will have rehearsal following the service. The Middle Cross practices on Thursday at 5.30 p.m., and we hope that you're all planning on attending our bowling event on March 18th. Well, Phil, as Goma Pyle used to say, surprise, surprise, surprise. We run out of things to talk about. Golly. Golly, indeed. I didn't think it was possible for us to run out of stuff to talk about. <laughs> Miracles never <laughs> cease. Thanks for watching, guys. We look forward to seeing you in worship. Please like and share this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification button so that you're notified when we load any new content. If you have any questions about Redeemer or have some suggestions, please contact the church office at churchoffice at redeemerwarsaw.org, or you can contact any of us with the addresses listed on the screen. Visit us online at RedeemerWarsaw.org or on Facebook at Redeemer Warsaw. Thanks for watching, and until next time, may the Lord be with your spirit and grace be with you. Well, good morning, good morning. Why is it good morning for us? Today we bring you information about this Sunday's... Yep. Yep. Of, uh, what's my theme?